Welcome back to Gas Burner to Gut. So, I have been defeated, finally. After f five years or something, four and a half, five years of making cooking videos, I have been caught out. And I've come to a place called Lucky Bay out of Kalbarri. There'll be a vlog coming out about this trip uh, next week. Um, and it's fireban. And I checked it three days ago and it wasn't fireban. I checked it again two days ago, it wasn't fireban. Now it's fireban. So I've turned up and under no circumstances can I have any kind of a solid fuel, barbecue, anything. So I put up a poll on my Instagram. If you want to keep up to date with what's happening behind the scenes, my Instagram is the place I'm most active, by the way. Put up a poll there asking people what should I do? Should I skip a week of uploads? Because I do not have time to get. The only other place I think I might be able to get this done is like if I find someone's private property in Albany, which is from here, like an 11 hour drive. Uh, so it'd be like 11 hours down there, five hours back. Like it's, it's, I just, I don't have the time. Um, I've got other stuff on. And anyway, long story short, the purpose of this episode is uh, the reason. I, sorry, the reason I've chosen this recipe for this episode is that it does not require fire. It requires a heat source, and they're very different. So for me to use this gas burner is not a problem because it won't impact the taste of the food, and that's really, really important to me. If I was cooking a steak, there's no way I'd be doing it on this gas burner. Uh, but if I'm doing pasta, which I am, this is called pasta assassina, or assassin's pasta. Um, I've never made it. I've just realized I'm making a vegetarian meal on gas. You're welcome to turn off now. I, I understand, I, I won't be mad, that's fine. Oh my God, it's getting worse every second. I promise the food's good. Um, and if I had some meat, I would add it, but also the Italians would kill me if I added it. So yeah, swings and roundabouts. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. I forgot my knives, hold on. And if you can't already tell, it is windy as hell. Um, so it's quite sheltered where I'm in here, which is nice, but um, this area is super windy. Uh, Any time after sort of 12, 12 p.m., it just gets windy around here. Uh, beautiful area, but you certainly... I had a really nice little afternoon off. I had a nice, a nice rest, which is very unusual for me. Uh, just chilled out. Did what I felt like doing because I could, because um, I didn't have to do other stuff. Anyway, um, it's a beautiful area to it. Just it's just a really pretty camp camping area. That's too much. No, it's never so. No, no such thing as too much garlic. All right. Um, so I'm, I'm going to get three cloves. I think traditionally it's two cloves. One cool thing about Italian recipes specifically is there is no such thing as stealing someone's recipe. Because if you don't do it the traditional way, you are not doing it correctly. It's just simply me presenting an Italian recipe. It's, it's quite funny. You can, you can be accused of stealing people's recipes if you don't do it an original, if you don't do it a certain way. But yeah, not for, um, not for most Italian dishes. <laughs> now, if I was, if I'm completely honest, the way, what I would actually do to this um, is add a little bit of Oh, what's it called? It's not prosciutto, it's the other cured meat that'll come to me and I'll think of it in time, but until then, bugger it, don't worry about it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna dice this up. Pancetta. I would add a little bit of finely diced pancetta and I would add it in with the garlic. But again, the Italians will kill me and I couldn't get pancetta in Calvary. Because yes, I, I like to do my shopping at the local shops, not in Perth. I even, you know, selfish, selflessly, selflessly went and um, had a meal at the pub because I'm just really into supporting local communities. It had nothing to do with the fact that I felt like a pub feed. All right, now it's time to make a, they call this a tomato stock. Um, cool, whatever. Uh, and I, I kind of understand why, but yeah, that's what they call it. So we want one tablespoon of tomato paste. This stuff's expensive, but don't throw it out. It lasts like ages uh, in the fridge. This, this has a use-by date in like two years. 
if you get a good one, sorry. And we want a cup of passata. It's one of those ones I really like to use, like an, an Italian brand, so I've got a Muti. Muti means mother in German. I wonder if that's related in Italian. Now, because there are no rules and there is, yeah, there are no rules. I boiled my electric kettle. Screw it. This is a full convenience meal. If I can't use fire, I'm going to use convenient stuff. I actually have to say, it is bad. I love this little electric kettle because it doesn't use much power. It uses a lot of amps while it runs, but overall it uses like less than 1% of the battery to boil quite a few cups of water. Um, and I got it originally for the baby's bottle and I never took it out of the thing because sometimes I like to have a hot coffee and I can't be bothered lighting a fire in the morning and I don't want to put the shroud around the gas cooker. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Or just I'm in my car and I don't have the camper, which means I don't have a gas cooker at all. That little thing, it's very good. It's pop-up brand. Got it from mm, some camping shop, don't remember. That's our tomato stock. And some salt, one teaspoon of salt. All right, let's get started on the other stuff. This little shroud's quite good, actually. I will say, I'm not saying I've never used this gas cooker. I actually have used it several times. If I, it's like middle of the day and I want to reheat something, um, this is what I use. I just turn this thing on and it works very well. So yeah, I'm not crapping on gas cookers. I'm saying there is a certain, I'm not going to say purity to this channel, but there is a certain way I've done things for a long time stubbornly and now I'm not doing it that way for this episode. Bit of olive oil. Uh, this is what this works best in a stainless pan. Maybe a bit more oil than that. Yeah, this should have quite a lot of oil. It's crazy to me that this is Italian because it goes against everything that Italians usually hold dear. Okay, garlic. Uh, talk about purity of my channel, nothing compared to the purity that Italian cooking has. About a tablespoon of chili flakes for me. That's to my taste. This should be spicy, by the way. This is a spicy dish. If you don't want it to be spicy, don't add the chili flakes. It smells great because it's chili and garlic and oil. Yeah, you can obviously do this in a cast iron pan or non-stick or whatever, but um, traditionally it is done on a stainless pan. So I brought my fancy Solar Technics one, which is my favorite pan. We have them at home as well. We just got them for the bush and then I went, oh wow, yeah, these are just the best pans. So, but like the stainless steel ones are expensive, but they will, they could bury me with this. They could bury my grandkids with this if they don't die. And they're tough. All right, so now, as I said, that's fragrant. We can add a little bit of this stock. Feels weird calling it stock with no stock in it, but yep. And we'll just simmer that away for a little bit till it's a bit more reduced. It's all very civilized cooking on gas, isn't it? There's no chaos. I haven't, I haven't, tried to burn the dog or having had to use a chainsaw or an axe or um, welding gloves or anything. It's just like, it's not sterile. I think cooking on gas is not sterile if you cook good food, but if you cook crap food, I think it can be sterile. Whereas you can cook crap food on fire and the drama almost makes it taste better. I don't know, that's just me. Now let's see how this, um, how gas cookers go with beer. Yeah. Gotta say, the beer makes it all right. 
Now, this is not the first time I've cooked on gas on this channel, but it's the first time I've done a recipe and a dedicated cooking video, cooking on gas on this channel. It is only the second time I've cooked on gas on this channel though. And so in my Prado, I don't carry gas, um, but the camper has it built in. And I am actually getting a new trailer in April. And that's gonna have something completely different for cooking. So you'll be able to see that then. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be interesting. Uh, and I will be at the, April, in, in April, I will be at the Rose Hill um, four-wheel drive show from Friday to Sunday. Sorry, not four-wheel drive show, the caravan and camping show. Um, so if you wanna come by and say hi, you can see my new trailer. Um, see, you know, no secret, it's gonna be another cub. Um, but it's, yeah, it's gonna be very much mine um, in spec. It's far from, far from a standard one. Okay, that's reduced a bit. Some pieces of pasta have broken, but I did not break them. Mm, it's not quite big enough, this pan, but that's okay. Oh my God, I actually get to experience it. The one good thing about um, cooking on gas is that you don't burn the edge of the pasta. Because the heat source is in the middle of the pan, usually the heat source goes around the edge of the pan and all these edge bits get absolutely burnt to hell and um, they taste like crap, but it's not happening. So while I would suggest a larger pan, it kind of works on gas. Please don't start tagging me in all your gas cooking videos. I don't want to see them. It hurts me. It doesn't really. I love, I love, I love seeing people cooking my videos, cooking my, my food. Justin from Trip in a Van did my mud crab recipe on an induction cooker. It wasn't bad. I wasn't. It made no difference to the crab. So this is kind of like, it's kind of almost like risotto in that you're almost using like an absorption method to cook this. I don't really know how that works, but it's, it's weird. And I've never done this before, but I know the theory and I'm pretty sure I can execute it because it doesn't look that complicated. It's really cool. I like this method. I'm sorry I keep breaking bits of pasta, but I'm just trying to get it cooked. Oh, I think it needs a bit more liquid. Whoa! There's something I hadn't considered. Now I'm gonna clean that. That previously would have just fallen into the fire. It did put the gas out though. It drips into the cutlery tray if it gets too deep, which it's not, it's not even close. And I don't have rubber grommets and stuff. So it's, it's never actually been an issue, but in theory it could, cause the cutlery tray is underneath. But to, actually, to be honest, I have had this thing poured on with rain when I didn't have this awning up <laughs> and I left it out overnight. And um, they got like four drops in the cutlery tray and this thing was full. So yeah, not the end of the world. If you're wondering what this beer is that I drink a lot of the time, it's CB Co IPA. It's a Perth slash Victorian brand. And many years ago, fun story, I did a thing called Fire to Free Beer where it's, it was, this was the fancy beer that I'd buy for myself to go camping with my mates. So I'd get like a cheaper beer and a fancier beer. Um, and I get half, half and we'd, we'd drink all the fancy beer and then we'd, so I drink all the cheap beer and then get onto the fancy beers. And um, I thought if there was ever a company I wanted to work with, it would be these guys at the time called Colonial. Um, and I, um, did a thing where I drank it every episode and um, the um, I, then I got people to tag me on Instagram saying fire to free beer and tag them on Instagram saying fire to free beer and just hound them to give me free beer. <laughs> and that was in 2020. And I think it took about a month and I got a call one day 
I sent them an email and they were like, uh, we don't know what's going on, but whatever. Um, they were like, uh, yeah, okay, sounds good, fine, whatever. Like, you know, we'll think about it, blah, blah, blah. And then I got a call a couple of weeks later being like, seriously, can, if we give you free beer, will it stop? And I was like, yep. They were like, done. So yeah, I bullied them into supporting the channel and I have done for the last few years. They even let me make my own beer. This is gonna take a while. That needs to reduce all the way down. So you can see in the middle here, it's actually starting to, we can't really see that well, but it is starting to burn. And that is what you want. This is burnt pasta. It's so weird. So just before the liquids evaporated, you want to kind of just peel it off the bottom a little bit. And then after that, once you've given a little bit of a stir around, you just leave it to burn. Which is, again, super weird. So let's um, leave it to burn. Interestingly, one of the most asked questions I get is um, what kind of camping gas cooker would you recommend? I don't know. Apparently jet boils are good. The, the big one, the double thingy. That's from what I understand, they are good. And that's where my knowledge ends. I've never used one. I've just seen them being used. They look like they've got a lot of grunt. I need to put one in my Delica. So that's probably what I'll go for. But yeah, who knows? Oh, it's got some lovely spice to it. Oof, oof. Oh, and if you'd like to buy a Cub Frontier, this one will be up for sale uh, in mid to late May. Looking at, it's gonna go up for 45 grand. Replacement cost is 64. We originally got it for 40, for 57, um, but prices have gone up, spec has changed. So if you wanted to buy a brand new Frontier with this spec, it's 64. And you stop tasting it, because it's making me excited. I know I said I wouldn't stir it again, but I, I, I want to. so weird to do it like this. Like none of it makes sense, but it all makes sense at the same time. Because it's like pasta risotto. Anyway, I'm gonna stop babbling. I'll never stop babbling, who am I kidding? And stop tasting. I'm trying to think of what kind of clickbait thumbnail I should have on this. Be like, I burnt it and I was caught out and they told me I couldn't work or I don't know, whatever. It'll probably just say something about fire bands. I'm not into clickbait. I'm into partial clickbait, not bullshit clickbait. I'm not into, it all went wrong and we're all gonna die. I'm into just enough to draw people in so they actually click the video. Cause you know, I want you to click the video, but I'm not into fake drama. I want you when you click the video to be satisfied with what the video was. Bugger all liquid left in that. It's looking good. What do you think, Fred? You don't care. Fred loves curling up in the sand. It's nice and cool, soft. He digs himself a little Fred-shaped hole. He just loves it. If I could have a pile of sand in the camper for him to sleep on, he'd sleep on that. God, I'm talking so much shit in this episode. I'm gonna have to cut some of it out for sure. Oh, look at that, brown, burnty bits. It's so close. All right, I think I'm just gonna send it with the heat and see how we go. To my sponsors, except for Cub, I understand if you wanna leave, I appreciate all the support and I understand if you won't take my calls anymore. All right, I think we're good. Top's burnt, which is good. Let's try and burn the bottom a little bit. What I will say is I think this is gonna make terrible leftovers. 
I think this is one of those things that has to be eaten fresh. I think it'll be super dry and super woody as leftovers. This little wind guard works very well. It is super, super windy, and that's doing a very good job. This is a thing that Cub adds, like it's like a, it's a standard thing, but something they add to these gas cookers. Now, I will say with a gas cooker, you've got a small, a smaller heat patch in the middle. So I'm actually gonna try and put it into the smaller heat patch. I'm used, I'm not used to having a, a central heat patch. I'm used to more even heat. I think this last stage, I'm gonna leave it still. I know I've said that like five times. We're gonna leave it sitting still and I'm actually gonna wait till there's a slightly burnt smell. Then I'm gonna take it off and serve it. One other thing is you should always, um, if you've got a stano pan, make sure that uh, you wash it straight away. Don't leave it out. Because if you wash it while it's hot, all that stuff will just come straight off. And you can use steel wool and all that kind of stuff on it. It doesn't matter, it's stainless. You can beat the crap out of it. And I won't leave you hanging on the leftovers front. I will include it in this video, what the leftovers taste like. I smell burning. Oh, there we go. That's what I want. That's what I want. Yep. That's exactly it. So. A tickle of um, Parmigiano, which yes, is different to Parmesan, proper stuff. All right, bit of parsley for greenness, make you feel healthier. Then, put your spear roll. Oh my god, mm. why isn't all pasta like this? My mission is to make more pasta like this. This is insane. The parmesan goes, parmigiana goes so well with it. But seriously, like I want to make this with a meaty stock and some other, oh my god, those burnt bits, its absorption method of cooking it is wildly good. It's not chewy. It's like if you got a perfectly cooked piece of pasta and then deep fried it quickly. So the inside was soft and beautiful and the outside had a crispy layer on the outside. It's the best sort of analogy I can come up with. It's spicy, it's perfectly balanced. That's phenomenal. It, I, I, I take, take it back, it doesn't need pancetta. Um, make sure you add the basil. Seriously. I can't recommend that highly enough. Well done, Italy. Um, I get it. Totally get it. Does it go well with beer? I think it would go better with a lighter beer. That's quite a strong beer being an IPA. <clears throat> this would go, I know Italians will kill me for saying this, but it would actually go really well with a glass of white wine, not red. That has no right being that good. I'm gonna try it with a lighter beer. There's the hazy, mandarin hazy. Oh yeah, that's it. 
It's good with her heavy beer. It's great with her fresher beer. Not light, fresh. Sour or something would be, oh. I am gonna smash this before it gets cold because as you can probably see, even in the B-roll it was windy. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. I'm sorry I had to cook on gas. I'm not sorry about this meal. <laughs>